Thanks for joining us. President Bola Tinubu has called on African leaders to respect democracy, rule of law, and ensure political stability. Tinubu stated this in Nairobi, Kenya, at a high-level event organized by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, on the margins of the 5th Media African Union AU Coordination Meeting. In a statement by his spokesman, Dele Alake, the president called on institutions in Africa to recognize and respect the need for democracy, uh, democratic renewal. Tinubu is also the chairperson of FECOA's Authority of Heads of State and Government, said coup d'etats should be discouraged in the continent. They said the trend of military incursion to politics is a threat to peace, security and stability, poverty, displacement and humanitarian crisis in Africa. The president in his statement presented by Ambassador Adamu Ibrahim Lamua, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, said it is regrettable that West Africa, despite its numerous instruments and mechanisms for promoting democracy and good governance, is leading other regions in the use of unconstitutional means to change governments. Well, we're supposed to have a background report to the origin of coups or the history of coups in Africa, nay, West Africa uh, particularly. But we've now been joined by a rise analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku, uh, to look at uh, this issue of coups in Africa threatening the stability of the continent, impoverishing the people uh, because of uh, the, the stability in the instability in the socio-economic construct of the sub-region. Thanks very much, Dr. Constance. Thanks Ikoku for Fulton. having me. That, that's a very timely uh, speech, you know, uh, by Nigeria's President Tinubu, uh, saying that the international community, uh, nay the United Nations, should discourage and not give incentives to coup plotters because of, you know, the destabilizing effects that... Uh, it, it, it leaves on, on, you know, the continent. So the, the president, through his representative, said a couple of things. And he was right in his assertion that coups should be, um, you know, things that it should be in the past in Africa. It shouldn't be current. However, you have to look at the conditions. If you want coups to stop, then African leaders need to create the conditions that will prevent coups. When you look at every African country, they have unique circumstances. At the same time, there are common factors that affect them. So let's take uh, number one, economic factor. A lot of countries have high level of poverty, glaring inequalities, economic mismanagement. Things like that fill resentment and frustration with the government. So it's a breathing ground for political instability and for coups. Then number two, you have uh, the resource cost or, you know, the, the battle for uh, minerals on the continent. So this has an internal uh, leg or dimension and it has an external dimension. So you have uh, foreign powers who come in and destabilize countries in cahoots with um, local elements and it causes a lot of problem. And then there is the ethnic dimension and religious dimension as well. Um, most African countries have found it difficult to build nationhood, you know, within uh, their countries. With the diverse uh, ex ex ethnic uh, conglomeration. Exactly. exactly. So some political leaders and individuals manipulate, you know, these factors or these circumstances in order to cause problems. And then you have leaders who stay put and do not want to leave. You know, so for instance, Cameroon, we've had that problem in Gabon, in Togo, um, Senegal recently, you know, in fact, it, the, the former leader before the present leader, Laurent Gbagbo, he was literally kicked out. And then this one, Makisa, was trying to extend his tenure, and then he was told in no uncertain terms, you cannot do that. It was already causing crisis in the country. So there are so many different factors that you have to work at. If you do nothing, then you cannot be preaching. Nigeria can begin to lead by example. The president talked about the rule of law. Mm. Are we following the rule of law? Can we beat our chest that we are an example in West Africa? We are a, a regional bloc. 
in West Africa. What are we doing to show that we are ready to advance not only West Africa, uh, but also the continent? Mm. Well, that's a very key issue uh, you mentioned that you earlier mentioned the issue of uh, control of mineral resources by external and internal forces, just like we saw when you look at the origin of coups in uh, Africa, uh, beginning with uh, Olympus in uh, Togo in 1963, then we had that of uh, Lumumba in Zaire, where Mobutu Seseko, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, kind of uh, connivance between the CIA and uh, the Belgian authorities, all because of the mineral resources, and of course Burkina Faso uh, during uh, Thomas Sankara's time too. And that instability seems uh, to be a recurring decimal. Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, uh, what other country again is being under the jackboots? Coups and military govern government were fashionable at, at a point. They are no longer fashionable. However, they are, they are coming back in Africa. Again, the African Union has to ask, ask itself, what can we do? Remember when uh, uh, Basanja was president and uh, the man in Gambia, Yahaya uh, Jami, Jami, was misbehaving. Mm. Uh, Basanja had the, the regional and continental clout to fly out there and say, you know what? This cannot happen mm. under my own watch. Mm. So we need leaders, continental leaders like that, that have that clout. We saw, we that, saw him do that too in Sao Tome and Principe. He yes. went there and uh, called the major and said, look, the president, in fact, the uh, president of Sao Tome and Principe was uh, with Obasanjo then in the State House and they flew together with uh, Nigeria's Air Force One in and fact, reinstalled the, the president yes. there. In fact, what you will see in some of these countries is that when the military leaders um, take power, the, um, the citizens are happy. They are delighted. Why? Because the civilian leaders have so brutalized and dehumanized them that they are looking for a breath of fresh air. So in cases like, um, is it um, Guinea? A couple of countries that it has happened uh, recently mm. and people are happy. However, um, it cannot continue for a very long time. But does time. that yeah. not set such a, a country or a people back, socio economically and politically? It does. It does. Some of them have said, yes, we will uh, conduct elections and then leave uh, when the elections have been conducted. That should be followed through. We need a strong body. The African Union needs to be strong, strong and more functional so that they can follow up. And then you come to countries um, like Central would African that, would Republic. That, would, would, would that not amount to interference? No, it's not interference. Um, the African Union is a body that works for all Africans. They, they have um, meetings, they have meetings, they have heads of states who head them. So for instance, we also have the regional body like ECOWAS. Mm. Um, our president is the current head of ECOWAS. The same way we have different African leaders that are heads. They guide, you know, the policies of, 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 of they guide the policies of the continent because you need cooperation. You need cooperation. We have the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Because mm. let's look at solutions now. What are some of the solutions that we can, you know, come up with? Economic diversification, intra-African trade. Mm -hmm. If you do not work together as a continent and keep saying that it, it interference, then that is not going to happen. It is not interference. It is collaboration, and that is needed. If you go to Europe, for instance, you can move around you know, freely without visas in so many European countries. And trade within that block is very, very tight. We need more of that in Africa. Instead, mo most of our money is being spent outside the continent. We need them to be spent within, within the, continent. the continent. And we need free movement. If you don't have a job in Nigeria, you can go to another African country. Others can come to Nigeria. Create the jobs and let the people move. Even, even with the xenophobic attacks in South Africa, because uh, Nigerian uh, professionals uh, are taking over loads of the jobs there? South Africa is a sore point. Mm. And I'm sure that um, their president is, 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 is sad about what is happening in the country. Um, there is a mix of factors. It's, it's complex. So they came out of appetite. A lot of them didn't have the skills and educational qualifications to take the, the, the jobs mm. that were there. And then you have people from other African countries like Nigeria, Southern Africa, trooping in there. They have the qualifications and taking the job. Of course, there will be some resentment. Again, the president or the country needs to work in order to provide education for their own people. And eventually, they will catch up. 
All right, thanks so very much, uh, Dr. Constance Sikoku, for the brilliant analysis there about uh, undemocratic forces creeping uh, into governance in Africa. You're welcome.